Hi, I'm John of John's Carnivorous Plants. This is my indoor nursery. And today I'm gonna to tackle the question of, should you separate carnivorous plant seedlings? Too long, didn't watch, yes. Now, of course I already planted up a good portion of uh, my clones. So generally speaking, uh, you can get carnivorous plants to grow very, very densely and close together especially ones that are very genetically similar or ones that have the same parent. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but you can generally see that in the wild, and like there's been a couple studies of this, plants that are related to each other, so like out of the same seed pod and they're different seeds and they're growing really closely to each other, they tend not to want to compete as much with each other and they'll just, you know, kind of stunt each other at each other's detriment. So like, you get a bunch of Venus flytraps growing together in a tight little pot, they're not gonna really wanna grow and like outcompete their brothers and sisters. But if you get ones that are genetically different, all holds bar, like they'll, they'll, they'll try to fight each other and one will reign supreme in the Thunderdome. Now, when it comes to things like Saracenia seedlings or Darlingtonia and like these plants that generally get bigger but smart, start very small, you can start them in like, you know, let me grab it. These smaller cups that I use, you know. And whenever they pop, you generally have about a month to uh, start, you know, taking tweezers and very carefully transplant them to either a cell tray or, you know, several different other pots. And whenever you do that, make sure you're, you know, acclimating them appropriately by keeping them misted and very moist, very happy, high humidity, etc. Basically as low stress as you can to minimize the loss of your plants. And they will grow much, much better. It's, uh, it's one of those things that I get often asked of like, oh, should I separate out these, these plants? Whether it's clones, seedlings, etc. And in almost every case that I've seen people ask me this, they probably already know my answer is yes, you should. The question to you though is how much space do you have? How many pots can you afford to, you know, put out and still maintain very well and, you know, actually baby the seeds like they need to be and nurse them to a much larger size? In some cases, you can get away with like, for example, I did some Saracenia seedlings, uh, a couple years ago and like just recently I've transplanted them up again and sometimes you can uh, let them go for uh, you know a couple months to maybe even a year or you can just separate them out into you know for like Saracenia seedlings and like one of the little three inch pots that I have you could separate them out for the first year so you have four you know one in each corner of a three inch pot there's a lot of different ways you can do it just as long as you're willing to as the plants get larger and you start seeing some of them stunt you're willing to go through and repot again. Basically, whenever you see the plants starting to slow down or some are getting like entirely crowded out to where they can't get light or unfurl or anything like that, that's generally speaking the time that you want to, you know, sit there with some tweezers or something and actually split them out. Now, is this like a definitive thing that, oh, after a month, just do it? No. It's definitely one of those things that you should wait and see and actually use your best judgment as you see them. Don't get lazy. And as soon, like I'm saying, like once they start overlapping, that's generally speaking whenever I'm like, okay, they got to split. Because at that point, they're literally starving each other of light. Plants depend on surface area to absorb as much light as possible. And if they're competing with each other and like, say, for example, I'm... I'm right now the Saracenia seedling. These are my pictures, you know, my head and my arms are the pictures. If I'm trying to spread out so I can get as much light as possible, and unfortunately I'm getting crammed like this, I'm not getting the surface area like I need to, and I'm not gonna get the same amount of food that I need. These plants have the growth pattern to grow a certain way for a very good reason. That's the way that evolution has dictated over time that that's the most advantageous and the, uh, the most optimal like growth pattern for where they grow to get the most light. Uh, well, given also their metabolic rate, all kinds of other factors go into it as well of like why that pattern is the best. 
but generally speaking they have they're trying to maximize surface area to get light and if they're getting crowded in with each other that means that surface area is getting uh, smaller and smaller meaning less and less food and less food means less growth you can see that it's a, a cyclical problem that ends up with them getting stunted and what i mean by stunted is that the plant once you know say for example you had one off by a pot by itself and you had all like 20 in one pot together once the ones in the pot in the left come six months later you'll notice they'll be noticeably smaller in general well in most cases than the one that's off by itself because it had more room to stretch out and do its thing and not have to compete with everyone else and that's basically the gist of should you uh separate out your carnivorous plant seedlings and the answer is yes yes you should very frequently and then make sure you got a good process of like how you're treating them post separation like for me i'll separate them out and then i very specifically the first week after separating i'll make sure i miss them every single day it's literally the only time i end up actually misting most of my plants and i picked that up from a tissue culture facility of like how they treat their plants uh as they're deflasking them and if it's good enough to deflask a plant from a sterile environment into the you know harsh uh unsterile world <laughs> then it's good enough for a seedling that's already been brought up in a you know a little bit more rugged environment than tissue culture i hope this uh, has been informative to you i hope you enjoyed please uh, like and subscribe uh, check out the links in the description you can come ask me questions directly on my discord or actually interact with all kinds of other carnivorous plant people or you can go to my website and buy a plant and help support me directly thank you so much for watching and i hope to catch you on the next one